buying the Lord of the Rings rights bizarrely cost less than the first season of the Rings of Prime. Well, one wonders then, if, when the show is so bad, where did all the money go? Wes Hal, mein Freund, and welcome to it another video. My oh my oh my dear friends, and one wonders again, where did all the money go? When talking about the Rings of Prime, of course. So, the latest news is that uh, the Embracer Group have uh, released and revealed the sum of money they paid for the rights to adapt the Lord of the Rings uh, for movies and video games and uh, all the things like that. All the things that I don't really want to see. And uh, if you've been following my channel for quite some time, you know that really, no, no, thank you. Thank you very much indeed. I am good with the source material. Thank you very much. No need for me to make new films and spin-offs and rip-offs and so on and so forth. But uh, it, it seems to me, and it is a fact, that those huge companies, they just want to make more and more. And they are willing to spend gigantic amounts of money. And then um, you see the final product, such as the Rings of Power, which of course was not made by the Embracer Group, but the Gollum video game is a completely different matter, is a, com a completely different question. And how did that end up? Well, uh, so bad that the creators of the game, the developers, had to apologize, publicly apologize for the poor quality, because... The reviews of that video game were horrible. Nobody is recommending the game. But uh, let us uh, dive into the article by uh, we got this covered.com and discover how much, in fact, uh, did Embracer Group pay for the rights. And then they are going to compare it with uh, how much the Rings of Power cost. So buying the Lord of the Rings rights bizarrely cost less than the first season of the Rings of Power. So once again, one wonders, right? And it goes. The world of rights and distribution contracts have only gotten messier with the advent of streaming and multimedia shared universes, and rarely has that been made clearer than in the case of the Lord of the Rings. And that is the unfortunate uh, thing here. Uh, the Embracer Group and everybody that holds at least a, a little bit of rights to adapt uh, some of the works by Professor Tolkien, they want to make his world into a Marvel Cinematic Universe type thingy, um, a multiverse of crap. This is the same thing that has happened to a lot of our beloved stories lately, not only the Marvel superheroes, but also DC superheroes. Now, as of making of this video, it is clear and apparent that the latest Flash movie uh, is a flop. That, well, not only a flop, that it actually lost a lot of money. A lot. And I have seen that film, and, and I mean, it wasn't the worst comic book movie I've seen, but you can see how much people are uh, tired and disgusted by uh, the huge mega franchises that are milking one of the same thing over and over again and, and are not even doing justice to the source material. Uh, for example, it continues, it was revealed in a recent earnings report that Embracer spent $395 million dollars to acquire motion picture, video game, board game, merchandising, theme park, and stage production rights pertaining to the Lord of the Rings franchise. I hate the word franchise. In addition to other authorized works hailing from both the Tolkien estate and HarperCollins. And one more thing. Uh, they mentioned board games and so on. Yeah, just look at the Magic the Gathering and what they're doing. I mean, I see new cards on the internet each and every single day. And what they have been doing to the characters from The Lord of the Rings is something that it is just keeping shocking me every day. So, once again, I have to reiterate, I have to say, what do you want to do today? Uh, I mean, sorry, what do you expect from those huge corporations? Nothing. Nothing but disasters. Right then, so it continues. However, Prime Video's blockbuster series, The Rings of Prime, which is an Embracer-backed production, to make things a little more confusion, confused, I think, um, cost more to make than the Swedish company paid for a huge slice of the Middle-Earth back catalogue. 
Amazon sunk an estimated $465 million into season one of the planned five-year fantasy with plans to funnel a billion in, into the sprawling universe when all is said and done. They are saying five-year fantasy is already going to be more, right? Because we know already that the second season is going to be delayed. Thank all the gods in the universe. Which means that the third season is going to be delayed, the fourth season is going to be delayed, and so on and so forth. So I don't know for how long we will have to suffer and uh, sit through the individual episodes of the rings. Well, you won't, but I will. Uh, to review it for you. As uh, many people like to say, thanks for watching, so we don't have to. Yeah, 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 my pleasure, I would say. But it is not my pleasure. <laughs> Believe me, it's not a pleasure to watch the rings of power. So, and the article continues. Um, things didn't uh, off to the great start with the Golem video game, as I said at the beginning, which could generously be described as having underperformed both critically and commercially, to put it lightly. Meanwhile, The Rings of Prime has been facing some backlash of its own, mm, really, for unsavory reasons that shouldn't need to be explained. What unsavory reasons are these? Um, the only reasons that people are criticizing The Rings of Prime is that it is a bad show. Full stop. It is, my dear friends, as simple as that. Firstly, a bad show. Secondly, it's not an adaptation of anything that Tolkien wrote. But if you want to know more, just go back to my channel. I've got like a million videos uh, complaining about the Rings of Power. And you will not hear anything is from me. No, it's, it's, it's all objective that many people know. Uh, all while brand new movies are in the works. Uh, after, as you just re reminded me, we got discovered. Thank you. After Warner Brothers decided that uh, Middle Earth was an IP well worth revisiting and yeah, milking more and more, giving the multi-billion dollar success of Peter Jackson's trilogies. And that is their greatest mistake. They don't realize, or maybe they do, but I don't know, that uh, Peter Jackson's success cannot be replicated. It cannot be done again. Not even he was able to do it when the Hobbit trilogy came out. So that's one in a lifetime, one in a generation opportunity, chance, thing. It can only happen once in a very, very long time for a creator to adapt such a work of art. Very good. And uh, the article continues. You could drive yourself crazy trying to figure out who owns what and who cares, really. And who can do what with which stories without stepping on somebody else's toes. But the most important thing is to remember is that The Lord of the Rings re remains a big business. Yes, unfortunately. So it's really a bunch of vultures just flying over the flying over the name The Lord of the Rings. It's not a corpse, but you know what I mean. And it is an interesting fact that it all happened just, you know, like right after Christopher Tolkien passed away. Tolkien's son. And that only proves that he was the only person protecting his father's legacy. Once he went away, all went to hell. All right, then. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. That will be all. Thank you very much for watching. And the Marie.